so finally the last video of the series so today we'll have a look at the index route where we will host and run our relief lab map so the front end basically so let's jump into the index html and uh, first of all give it the meaningful header let's replace this test text with some um, london bus size map and let's delete the paragraph all right so far so good let's have a look at the leaflet documentation so let's go to the leaflet page tutorials and to the quick start guide which has a very good documentation here so basically first step we need to prepare our page we need to include the leaflet CSS and leaflet JavaScript file into our index.html. So let's do it. Let's start with the CSS. Let's just copy it over. And afterwards, also as stated here, the JavaScript needs to be included after the CSS. So let's just do it what's stated in the documentation here and copy also the JavaScript. Uh, let me increase the indent a little bit far so good so the first two steps done but there are some some more so let's scroll further in the documentation so to basically put a map into our html file we need to copy this div and let me directly paste it under the header so div id map id and let's also give the page a meaningful title here london live map all right but that's not it so um as mentioned here we also need um to define a height here so we can either do it in a css file separately i'm just doing it here in, in the diff itself with a style command and will not only give it a defined height but also with a width of 900 pixels and a height of let's let's take 580 pixels good next so now we are ready basically to initiate the map so let's follow the instructions here and first of all create a variable my map uh, with with um, certain attributes so um, Let's copy it first of all uh, into a script tag, of course. You can also put it into a separate file. I, I'm refactoring this later. So um, we create a map object, which takes basically, uh, oh, first of all, let's copy this one here to add a tile to the map. So basically the map object bar my map takes um, three arguments, uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, and the zoom factor of 13. So latitude, longitude. Um, actually, this is already London and the zoom factor of 13. And next, uh, we we add something to the map uh, at so-called tile layers. So there are different kind of tile layers. Uh, we'll be taking the open street map here um, from Mapbox. And for this, we need an access token of uh, from, from Mapbox. So for this, just enter Mapbox in your browser, um, click the first hit, um, and you need to create an account here uh, and log in to, to get an access token. But it's for free, so just do it. Um, you can, after your login, go to tokens and get your token here. Just copy it to your code. And basically, that's the basic setup of creation of a map so let's run our app here our app.py and let's have a look at this like you remember from the last video it's running on localhost port 5001 let's open it and here it is our map of london that was easy right so now let's get to the dynamic part and the markers and stuff like this which should be updated in real time so for this as we have 
remember from the past, we have three bus lines, bus data one, bus data two, bus data three. Um, and for each of the bus lines, we will create a, um, a, a layer of the map, a marker layer, so to say, in which we will store the, the markers of each bus line. So let's create them, map marker one, map markers two, and map markers three. We'll make use of them in a minute. Next, uh, we'll be adding um, a new event source, which listens basically to our endpoint uh, we defined an app.py, so to our topic slash, and then whatever topic we choose. Now let's create a new one here, so and geodata underscore final. Um, then to the event source, we need to add an event listener, which actually listens all the time to, to updates or new event messages um, uh, in this location, geodata uh, topic slash geodata final. And uh, let's write a small function for this event listener. So whenever a new event, a new message is coming in, let's execute a function. And um, basically here we now will put in our logic to update the markers whenever a new event is coming in. So uh, first of all, let's log something in the console that we can see how the data is coming to the browser, how it's, it's getting displayed, how we can exit it. And you will see this later on in the demo, uh, how this looks like. So what we do, first of all, we will create a new variable and the, the event, the message we get, we will pass this into a, a object variable, so obj. So a variable we'll deal with and we'll also log this to the console. As you remember from the bus data uh, py setup, it's in JSON format. So uh, just remember in the variable object, we have our actual event data and um, we, we specified different bus lines. So as you remember bus data one py, we have a bus line of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. So whenever, um, the uh, event contains a bus line of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, we do something. Because we have three different bus lines, we do this differentiation base, based on the bus line. So first of all, um, this might be confusing now, uh, but gets clear, clearer in a minute. So um, at the beginning, we will be um, looping through the map marks one, um, uh, array. Um, so this is a, um, a layer of all markers of bus line one so far. And we're actually deleting this layer from the map first of all. So um, let's let's do it or not delete, remove it from my map basically. So remove a layer map markers one. So this is um, the reason behind is that only the latest markers of a bus line should always be displayed. Otherwise we would have a map with thousands and millions of markers where the bus was just a second ago and just a second ago, but we only want to have the latest position. So that's why we delete this layer completely first. And afterwards we'll be creating a new marker, marker one which makes use, use of the l.marker, so the leaflet marker objects, uh, which takes uh, three attributes, I think, so a latitude and longitude, um, and I think a third one. Um, uh, let me think. First of all, uh, the latitude and longitude, of course, we take from the message, from the object variable, uh, from the event, so to say, and then we add the marker to the map. Let's see what the third argument of the marker object was. Uh, okay, there is none. Then, <laughs> sorry for this, let's just remove it. Or did I miss something? No. Then let's just remove the comma here. All right, so whenever a new event appears, we delete the first markers and then create a new marker and add it to our map. 
and as well to um, our map marker layer. So here it's not, not add to, here it's basically a push to the map markers layer or array. So this is basically all the code for our bus line one. Now let's just copy it over for our bus line two and three. First for the two, uh, let's re replace all the ones with the two. So a new mark two here and we'll use of the mark, map markers two layer here. And one more time for our bus line three. And I'll replace the two with the three here. So that's it basically, that's all our code. Um, I think it will get a much much more clear when we run it in a second. So uh, then you see what what's including in this OBJ object, so on. But first of all, uh, we rely on GeoData final topic here. So I think we don't need to make an adaption to app.py because here we did it generic or dynamically. But to our bus data, we need an adaption here. We still had this test bus data topic. We need to replace it with, with, with our actual topic here. GeoData final for all three bus lines. Okay, let's save it all. and scroll through it. Actually, uh, I think I found an error here. So it's not new event source written together. There's a space missing. It's new space event source here in line 30. Uh, and one more issue I found. So where we produce a bus data, we need to import the time module. And after we produce a message, let's uh, wait for one second because otherwise it's a too quick too much messages at, at once uh, so let's for all our three bus lines uh, include a, a wait a second of waiting here to um, yeah otherwise uh, the markers would appear and disappear so quickly um, that it's not really re re readable for us. So let's include, and even the bus is not that quick. So let's include a sleep here of, of one. All right, now um, I think first of all, we need to create this topic we want to use. So let's um, go to Kafka, make, uh, make of course sure Zookeeper Kafka are running and then let's um, use the comment Kafka topics, but Zookeeper localhost 2181 topic and uh, the name was geodata final so let's copy it over geodata final we want to create it with one partition and a replication factor of one. Oh, okay topic geodata final already exists so perhaps i did it for testing reasons already um, can we use it? I'm not sure what data is in. Uh, perhaps let's just create a new topic. Um, this is more easy. So let's call it geodata final one, two, three. And hit enter. And okay, create a topic geodata final one, two, three. Perfect. Now again, we have to modify our code. Geodata final one, two, three. Geodata final one, two, three one more time and also in our index we need to adapt the event source all right i think now we are ready to test so let's uh, prepare our consoles here um because actually we need three more consoles to um, execute our three bus lines uh, each in, a, in an own command line here. Um, so let's prepare this so that we can spin it up very quickly one after each other in a second. So let's just move to, to our folder here. 
a second time. Um, let's do the same. Let's make it a little bit smaller and put it next to each other. And let's do it one last time. Dun, 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 dun. Here we are. So now we got three common lines open, one for each bus line. Now let's close. I think we don't need this anymore. Let's go to the browser. Ah, uh, no. This was wrong, sorry. Where's my browser? Uh, come on, let me first put the CMDs on top and now the browser and here let's also open the console because we, we, we're doing a console log to see actually how the messages are looking here in the browser. Now let's spin up our, it was bus data one py, right? Yeah. So let's spin it up, bus data one dot py. And you see here it's producing messages and perhaps I need to hit refresh. Yeah, and as you can see here, it's appearing in the browser. The marker is getting deleted and updated all the time here for our bus line one. And you also see how the message structure looks like. So you, you have a bus line, you have a um, um, latitude, a longitude and so on which we actually use in the JavaScript. So now let's spin up the second bus line. And okay, uh, this looks strange on the map. I think there's one error in our code. What could it be? Uh, let's check in a minute. Let's first spin up also our third bus line. All right, so all three bus lines are producing data. You can see it on the right, but the markers are behaving strange. I think I know why. So all bus lines are producing data. You see it here. Uh, I think, yes, I forgot an equal sign here for each of uh, where we check the bus line. Let me refresh it. Ah, now you can see it. We got three different kind of markers and they are moving and that's it basically. Uh, we can of course also color the markers, but I leave it up to you. Um, just try it out. Perhaps it's a small challenge for you to color the, the markers differently. If you don't know how to do it, you can just write it in the comments. Um, yeah, I think we can of course refactor the code a little bit, but I, I'll do this before I do the Git. Um, and yeah, um, thank you very much for, for watching all this and any feedback, highly appreciated. And of course, if you liked it, leave me a like, leave me a subscribe and see you soon. Bye bye.